Phosphorylation is the first phase of photosynthesis, and it's sometimes also called the light reactions or light-dependent reactions. These processes occur in photosystems 1 and 2, which are complexes found in the thylakoid membrane, as we talked about in the structure of a chloroplast. So interestingly, as you can see through this graph, photosystem 2 comes before photosystem 1, and that's just because scientists can't really count. <laughs> just kidding. It's actually because they were named in the order that they were discovered. So photosystem 1 was discovered first, but photosystem 2 comes first in the reaction. A little confusing, but I'm sure you'll get it over time. So quickly before we delve into the details of phosphorylation, let's look at um, a brief summary of the inputs and outputs. So the inputs include water, and NADP+, and ADP, whereas the outputs include oxygen, NADPH, and ATP. So each photosystem contains chlorophyll A, these two right here, and accessory pigments chlorophyll B and carotenoid. So these are all the accessory pigments. And as we said, the main two products of phosphorylation are ATP and NADPH. And if you remember how ATP was um, produced in cellular respiration, it's pretty much the same process in photosynthesis. So briefly, to review, electrons will flow down an electron transport chain and the energy that's generated from this flow can be used to pump protons into the stroma and this will create the um, proton gradient that we're familiar with but rather than creating it within the intermembrane space of the mitochondria it creates it between the stroma and the thylakoid space so the potential energy of the proton gradient can then be utilized for creating ATP as the protons flow through ATP synthase. So this should all sound vaguely familiar, if not pretty familiar. The unfamiliar part is how we get to the electron transport chain, and it begins with the light and the pigments. So light energy is absorbed by the accessory pigments and passed on from pigment to pigment until it reaches chlorophyll A. And what happens when it reaches chlorophyll A, the energy, the light, the energy in the light gives the electrons in chlorophyll A enough energy to escape chlorophyll A altogether. So this is an escaped electron. And the molecule that accepts this escaped electron is called the primary acceptor. And then from the primary acceptor, these, these electrons can then flow down the electron transport chain. And when it flows down the transport chain from photosystem 2 to 1, this is when ATP is generated. But remember, there's another electron transport chain, so this happens twice. So light is absorbed by the accessory pigments, passed from pigment to pigment, flows into chlorophyll A, excites chlorophyll A's electron, is accepted by the primary acceptor, and flows down electron transport chain. But the electron transport chain from photosystem 1 does not produce produce ATP like photosystem 2, it produces NADPH, our second product. And what happens is it gives the enzyme NADP plus reductase the energy to take NADP plus and protons to create NADPH. So where do these protons come from and what happens after these electrons escape from chlorophyll A? They need to be replaced, right? And that's when water comes in. As we said, water is an input to phosphorylation. And what happens, water is broken down into three components. Two protons, two electrons, and half an oxygen molecule, as you can see shown right here. And each of these three components is used from the water molecule. And this water molecule is broken down um, by what we call photolysis. So it's photo or light is breaking apart the water molecule so we can just like represent this through a lightning ball and the light is breaking the bonds in the water molecule these three components are used like this in phosphorylation so the electrons from the water flow from the water to chlorophyll A to replace the electrons that are escaping chlorophyll A because if they weren't replaced chlorophyll A would be really unstable so this only happens in photosystem 2 because the electrons in photosystem 1 are replaced by the electron transport chain that flows from photosystem 2 to photosystem 1. The protons in water are used in the proton transport, uh, the, sorry, the proton gradient. And after the protons flow back through ATP synthase, they can then again be used to create NADPH, so protons have a double use. The oxygen is the waste product 
of phos or photosynthesis, which we commonly know, um, because photosynthesis makes the oxygen that humans breathe. So, to briefly summarize, photos um, phosphorylation is the first phase of photosynthesis. It involves photosystems 1 and 2, but photosystem 2 comes first, and the main two products generated from phosphorylation are ATP and NADPH, and these are carried into the stroma to be used for the Calvin cycle.